By functional programming, we normally mean a voiding state. That is, if we have a scale function that takes a shape and a number to scale that shape by, then we return a new shape instead of changing the old shape. So if we had a rectangle shape uh, and its area is 150, we could scale that rectangle and take the area of that shape and it might be 600, but uh, if we take an area of r again, it's still 150. The scale function doesn't change the rectangle. In this sense of functional programming, the alternative would be imperative programming. That is, a scale function that changes the shape that we give it so that the old shape is not available anymore. Functional programming often means using function as values. And this is a different sense of functional programming, but it often goes along with functional programming in the sense of avoiding state. Uh, using a function as a value means that uh, calling map and providing a function that we make up right there. So uh, we could call map on just area, because area is a value, or we can make this lambda that takes an argument s, passes s to, arg to area, and checks whether the result is greater than 40. So we can write anonymous functions like this, we can put these lambdas inside of other functions, and so on. Uh, we get to use functions as values and nest them as much as we want. And the contrast to this might be called first-order programming. Something like C, where you can pass function pointers around, but you can't nest functions inside of uh, other functions. Finally, functional programming often means data type-oriented programming. This is a third meaning of functional programming, and it's connected to the others, but again different. Data type programming means that we define types like shape with their different variants. And then each function that we write that works on shapes um, has a type case and has to deal with each of the individual variants. And this pattern applies to things like lists as well. Uh, again, a list is either empty or cons. So whether we use type case or whether we use a cond with empty question mark and cons question mark, every function that works on lists deals with the empty and the cons cases. The alternative to data type oriented programming is object oriented programming. And in data type oriented programming, while we have these functions that deal with all possible variants, in, data, in object oriented programming, we have different classes, and each class implements all the operations for that variant. So the difference is that with data type oriented programming, every time we want a new operation, like area, perimeter, or scale, then we write a new function, and we don't have to change any of the old functions. But when we add a new variant, like a circle, uh, then we have to change all of our old functions, like area and perimeter. With object-oriented organization, in contrast, then whenever we add a new operation, we have to change all of the classes or the existing objects to add that new operation there. So if we added uh, scale, then we would have to add a new method to the rectangle class here. On the other hand, if we add a new variant in the object-oriented world, then we don't have to change any of the old code. If we add a new circle variant of shape, then that would be a new class with the area and perimeter methods, and none of the old classes would have to change. So this trade-off between data type oriented and object oriented is a trade-off in the way you organize your code, uh, what kinds of things you can do to the code without having to change the existing code, or what kinds of changes are needed to add a new variant or a new operation. But this difference is orthogonal to the question of whether you use state and whether you have functions around as values.